Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And I learned something this week and I want to share it with you. And this is going to be a short video because I've got a lot of work to do. But I found this to be really good to know. And so I figured you should know it too. So hang around. This is more fun with Anchor Points. So you may have seen my previous videos where I discuss what I call anchor points. If you haven't, I'm going to put a link to that video or videos at the end of this one. You'll want to watch those because this is a really neat feature in Lightburn when you fully understand or begin to fully understand how to use it. Because I'm still learning and I learned this this weekend. But let me show you uh, what I'm talking about first. Uh, let's put a couple of things on the work area here. I'm just going to draw out a couple of squares. Put them on. Uh, put them on the blue layer, bright blue, so you can see them better. And I'm going to draw another one, and another one, and one more. Okay. Now these are just random squares, <clears throat> but. When I speak of anchor points, what I'm talking about, if we select one of these, these nine dots right here, these are what I'm referring to as anchor points because that's what they do. They anchor the selected object in the position in which you have selected up here. So let's say if I take this square right here and then I select, hold my shift key and select this square and center it, right there those squares are centered up correct correct now if i zoom into just those two by using my zoom to a selected object there you can see everything is positioned exactly in center now if i select this tool and i'm, I'm going to change uh the height i'm going to leave the width alone i'm going to change the height and i'm going to change it to uh uh just say uh, about half of that, 17.5, and hit tab. You see it shrunk it down to the middle. It's still centered. Undo. Because I have my center anchor point selected right here. Now, someone asked me uh, after my one of my other anchor videos, why are these important? Well, let's just say... If I wasn't working in center, no matter where I'm working, if, if I've got to, I'm working on a design that requires I take this corner of that square and position it right there. So they're touching each other. Those are perfectly aligned. And then I discover I need to change this square. It's the wrong height. Well, if I select that and come in here and change the height to 17.5 half again, well, now I've just lost my position. I've got to grab my square and bring it back up here and put it back in place. But let's show you what happens with anchor points if you use them correctly. I've got everything positioned correctly and now I know I need to resize it. Well, what I do, I select that and before I do my resizing, where does it need to be anchored? It needs to be anchored up here in this top left corner. So I change this anchor point to there and now change my height to 17.5 just like I did just a second ago and you see all it done was reduce the height I kept my position that's the value of these anchor points and you, the anchor can be moved around on obviously on nine different positions I'm not going to go any further in this part of it like I said the link to the other videos that goes into this in more detail <clears throat> is there but what I'm going to show you now is what I learned this week that goes beyond the position and holding its place. And this was really cool. If you're designing, delete all that. If you're designing in Lightburn, like this is a box I'm working on and I've been working on for the last week and a half. And I'm this is one side of it. And I'm going to need to make some changes to this. I'm going to ungroup everything. So now each one of these is individual pieces. 
And these three right here make up uh, a shelf on this box. And I'm gonna select all three of these and then group them together. My anchor point's in the center right now. And if I want to change my angle of inclination on this box, or this, this, this shelf on this box, you've got this rotate feature right here. And it's rotating in degrees. Do you want to rotate in one degree, 10 degrees, 90 degrees? <clears throat> and just to show you, if I draw a random rectangle right here, select it, and now tell it to, tell it to rotate 45 degrees. It rotates it 45 degrees. If I hit undo, negative 45 degrees rotates it counterclockwise into that 45 degree position. Now, I've got it in the center anchor point, and you can see, in fact, what we'll do here, just for demonstration purposes, let's uh, actually let's undo that. There we go. I'm going to draw a circle and tell it to go to the center and the top. Now I'm going to duplicate that, control D, and send it to the bottom. And one more, control D, and send it to the middle. All right, so now with my anchor point in the middle, and I tell it to rotate 45 degrees, it rotated on that point. So the center never moved. Undo. If I move it up here to the top center and tell it I want it to rotate 45 degrees, the center stayed in position there and rotated out toward the bottom. You see what's happening? Now undo. Uh, undo. All right, now I'm going to um uh, make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to duplicate this control D group it and send it to the side I'm I'm going to recreate those nine dots group that and this is just for illustration purposes so you can see what's going on now I'm going to ungroup all of these. Everything's singular. All right. Now, I'm going to select the square, and now I'm going to tell it this bottom <clears throat> left corner and tell it to rotate that 45 degrees. See there? Undo. Now I'm going to do the bottom center. See what's happening? Now, if you are designing, if you're creating your own creations, this is extremely helpful to know how to use this and how it works. Because, for an example, delete all that. On my box, I need to lower the end over here, raise the end over here, but I do not need to change my center position on this in this box. So if I if I did not know how to use my anchor points, and this and I had not paid any attention to where this anchor point was at, if it's in some random location, and I tell this to rotate, and I just need to rotate it, you know, two degrees, I don't exactly know what happened or where it went, but. Uh, or it might have done something if let's go back here and say it was there until it rotate two degrees. I'm I'm it's I don't know what's exact I don't know exactly where it happened, what happened. I don't have as much control over it. I don't have as pre the precise placement of it. So I know that I need to maintain that center position. <clears throat> 
then I can select that and tell it I want it to rotate from the center on the, the bottom center right here and I want it to rotate two degrees let's see if that's gonna be enough I think I want to do a little more so I'm gonna undo that and I want to give it five degrees and see what that looks like okay I like that better all right so that's anchor points and how I use them <clears throat> There were several comments, like I said, in the other videos, was like, I don't know why you would need that or why it would be important or the position's irrelevant. But no, it's not. If you're laying out a design and need to have precise control of your placement of your parts, especially if you're resizing them and you don't want to lose their, their position, then it's crucial that you anchor that point in the position that you need it to stay before you start resizing things. So... This is a design that I'm working on for the upcoming live stream with the Laser Makers Realm. And this is a large project. It's, I think, about 70 some odd pieces. Uh, it's going to be a free design for those who are tuned in for the live stream. So, Saturday, uh, this is August the 9th. So, coming up this Saturday, look at the calendar. What day is that? Uh, August the 12th, 2023, live stream on the Laser Makers Realm. We will be. I'll be giving away this file for those who are turned, tuned in for the live stream only. So, uh, but it will be available on my hobowithwood.com for purchase. If you see the stream in a replay or after the fact, this is a really neat project, and I've had a a lot of fun, and a lot of hard work putting this thing together, and the engineering behind it is precise. There's a lot of time and research went in and testing to make this happen. So if you found this informative, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. The super thanks is always down there to show a little, little love, spread some love, buy me a biscuit. Um, and when I say buy me a biscuit, I literally mean buy, buy me a biscuit. Uh, I've got a Bojangles next door and I'll, you'll keep me in biscuits. I'd appreciate it. Patreon.com is always an option. Patreon.com slash Hobo with Wood. Uh, all of my patrons are greatly appreciated. I share files with them monthly, sometimes multiple times a month. If you're a gold or silver level, bronze levels, just get more instructional videos. So if you like my designs, you like my files, and you want to do some free stuff coming your way, your support at Patreon.com slash Hobo with Wood would be greatly appreciated. Super thanks is always an option. Hobowithwood.com. I'm putting new stuff on there every week. Jump over there and take a look at it. And I want to make this guarantee to you on my files on Hobowithwood.com. I guarantee my files on Hobowithwood.com to be flawless. How can I make that guarantee? Because if you find a flaw... I want you to tell me about it so I can fix it so no one else has an issue with it. I will refund your money that you paid for for that file and give you a coupon of that same amount toward a future purchase on HoboWithWood.com because I want to know if there's an issue, a true problem with my files so that no one else has a problem. Before I put anything out there on HoboWithWood.com for sale, I have built it myself, but that doesn't mean that I don't, I, I forgot to cross my T's or dot my I's before I uploaded that file for sale. I try to make sure everything's perfect, but I'm human. But I do want to know when there's a problem, I will fix it. And if it's not something that you can fix, I will fix it and then send you the revised version along with the coupon and a refund. So my, you, you can't go wrong. I don't know anywhere else that you're going to get that guarantee on the files you buy for your laser making fun and re recreation. So HoboWithWood.com, PatreonWithWood.com slash HoboWithWood. Tune into the live streams on Laser Makers Realm every other Saturday. 
currently currently we're doing 9 p 9 p.m eastern standard time so until the next video i'm steve hobo with wood and i'm out <laughs>